back everyone it is the shrew that loves to review here with you today now it is a very exciting day for us because today is the day that we are finally going to start reviewing all of those jurassic world toys that we got uh, about a week ago actually god it feels forever ago doesn't it um and you know we, we we showed some restraint we didn't open them we kept them in the package and we kind of thought you know we'd start off with the smaller ones and then kind of build our way up to the bigger and more exciting ones but that being said we did not want to do just one of the vanilla figures that is, has already been reviewed a dozen times uh and it's just you know something that you see every day oh no no we wanted to start off a little interesting so we are going to do one of the target exclusive Legacy Collection Dinosaurs, and it is of course this awesome Velociraptor model. Oops, there he goes. Um, anywho, yeah, so this one, it's small, but it's exciting because it is of course part of the Legacy Collection. So we're going to start off this review by talking a little bit about the packaging, and then we're going to dive right into the dinosaur itself. Now the thing about, um, oops, Mattel's packaging is, unlike what Hasbro did, it really is a kind of one and done thing. I mean, I, I cracked it open to open it. All you gotta do is take some scissors, cut here, 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 and here, which I have already done. And if you just slide out those tabs, you can kind of see um, what you're looking at. Ooh, it looks like there's one more piece of tape that I missed. Give me a hot second here. Had to find my scissors. I keep bumping my camera too. So there's one last piece of tape up at the tippy top there, right in between the tabs, kind of difficult to get at. There we go, snip that, and then we pull it open. On the inside there, you can see you have got instructions on how to make this thing's action gimmick work. Um, no need for battery replacements on this guy, he is not electronic. And here's the thing about Mattel's packaging. These plastic tabs do not come out. Um, you cannot take them out and loop them back through because they are one piece and given their construction, they will not go back through once you have snipped them. The rubber bands down here can be replaced, but these ones will not. So you can put this guy back in and have just this band kind of holding him in, but you're better off just cutting these guys. And you know, I, for the collectors out there who like to keep these things mint in the box, that is very unfortunate. Um, I'm, I'm one of them. I like to have things new in the box, but I also like to have them out to play, and I like to have that ability to put them back in if I see fit. Um, but Mattel has not given us that option here, it would seem, and I think they probably did that so that way you'd have to buy two, you know, one to keep in the box, one to play with. Now as far as that rubber band back here goes, that's a simple process. You just undo it, like so. And the dinosaur is now free. We're going to set him aside and give you guys a look at the packaging here. So if we start off in the corner there, you can see you have got that sort of kind of, you know, JPEG PNG version of Rexy that has been popping up everywhere since the first Jurassic World trailer. Feels like it's used in everything dinosaur related, um, comics internet memes etc but this 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 has been seen many times and i kind of don't like it with the rest of the aesthetic uh since it is such a new image but then you've got this this sort of classic vibe of the jurassic park um original uh scenario going on like you see the classic gates there that those are the gates to the original park and then you've got the it is jurassic world legacy collection but you know i mean i i do with this feels a little out of place compared with the rest of this on the bottom here it's kind of like a concrete setting and then if we flip it to the side there you can see the jurassic world legacy collection logo on both sides there and then if we flip to the back 
You can see the emblem up there, and here's a little diagram of how to make this raptor do its thing. You push down, pull, release, and launch, and it leaps forward. And of course, we are going to display that for you there. Up here, it explains all of the um, information surrounding the new Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom app that Mattel uh, had made in order to go to be released next to their dinosaurs. And down in the corner here, you can see the other dinosaurs of this size range in the Legacy Collection. The Pachycephalosaurus, Young T-Rex, and Pterodon are Pterodactyl are all out. I do not know about the Dilophosaurus or the Raptor yet, but we will see. Those might be part of a Series 2 thing coming in the fall. I know Mattel has more stuff up their sleeve. And then the bottom is just all the boring logos, warnings, yada yada yada, nothing too exciting. But without further ado, here is the dinosaur itself. And as you can see, this dinosaur, this particular Velociraptor, looks an awful lot like the dinosaurs that we see in the last world, which is really cool to me because um, I, I, I love that. I, I love that they're um, paying tribute to the olden days of the series. They're not just making toys for the new movies. They're like, here is what it used to be and we are going to honor that, which is just so cool to me. I love that they're take, taking the time to give us this line. Um, and as far as sculpting goes, it's pretty good. It's pretty on the nose. We're going to give you a closer look at it here, starting off with the head, as we usually do. So as you can see, the oops, too far. The head is incredibly raptor-like in its shape. You've got the cat eye pupil, lovely sculptural details, including scales of varying sizes adorning the head. If we go down the back of the neck, you can see wrinkles and skin texture and folds and everything. And this model does have an articulated jaw, which opens up nice and easy there. The cheek flap is painted, which is always a great detail. On the inside of the mouth, you can see the back of the throat and the tongue are also painted. The gums are not, which is a little off-putting for me, but it's such a small mouth, I guess I can forgive it. You don't really notice it when you're displaying it, only when you're kind of looking at it at just the right angle. And I know it's kind of out of focus right now, but yeah, they're not painted. The teeth are individually sculpted. Oh, come on, camera, play nice. There we go. The teeth are individually sculpted, but they're not really sharp or all that well-defined, but they do have a breakup in them. Going down the neck, as you can see, you have got those lovely wrinkles and full and skin folds. And once we get to the uh, midsection, it kind of becomes a mix of the two. You can see lovely wrinklage, but then around the torso, leg, thigh region, you can see scaling going on. Going down the body, you can see lovely, you can see the vertebrae are kind of pressed up against the uh, skin there. So you get a definite idea of the underlying anatomy. And if we go down the tail, there's a seam there. I really don't know why that has to be there, but I guess I can forgive it. But as you can see, the wrinklage does continue. And the tail is a much softer, bendier plastic, and I assume that's to accommodate the gimmick. If we take a look at the arms here, as you can see, there is some lovely sculpted musculature in there. And they are incredibly flexible and bendy. A very, very soft plastic, these arms. Um, you have got all three claws. The claws are not painted on the hands, which is unfortunate. I do wish they had gone the extra step and done that for us. And for some reason, I don't know, the arms just look like a very off orange to me. Um, it's like they're much more saturated, we'll put it that way. And like you can see on the head, it has that same sort of color, but it is it's, it's broken up in some way. Here it is just a, the flat orange and it stands out against the sort of mustard yellow of the uh, dorsal region, um, which, I don't know, it kind of throws me uh, and kind of messes with the overall image, um, but I guess I can forgive it. If we take a closer look at the legs here, you got some lovely sculpted musculature in the thigh region. Going down the calf, again, you've got lovely sculpted muscles. But then we get to these feet, and oh my gosh, these things are enormous. These feet are probably the biggest feet I have ever seen in proportion to uh, the body on any Jurassic World or Jurassic Park toy ever. Um, like this is, this is clown level, guys. Um, it is such a massive statement that it really does distract from the overall, um, uh, appeal of this piece, and I get it, they have to make them big for balance, and I'm sure 
they engineered it so that it would be able to stand for us, but at the same time, it's like... Do we really need them this big? I mean, this feels like overkill. My goodness, are you kidding me? Wow! <laughs> I mean, that thing could almost fit in my shoes. Okay, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but like, seriously, if I take my fingers here, that's the length of the foot, and I bring them up to the midsection without moving them, it's almost the length of the midsection. Like, that is absurdly big. Um, I don't know, I guess I would rather Ha uh, run the risk of um, having smaller footed dinosaurs and then having um, the chance of them falling rather than having the guarantee that they'll stand but then the feet look absolutely ridiculous. That's probably just me. I don't know. As you can see, the toe claws are painted a nice sleek black and this raptor does feature several points of articulation including in the neck. You can lower the head, lift it, rotate it to the right and the left. It does go 360, not sure why you would want it to, but it can. The shoulder features a ball and socket joint similar to ours, so you can rotate those arms out, up, down, and in. So great articulation there. The legs, the legs don't really move, and I guess that's because of the action feature. So I guess now is as good a time as any to kind of display that for you. So here we go, you press down. Whoa, <laughs> is that it? Um, <laughs> I guess, I guess that's probably it. It probably works a little better. Maybe you kind of just have to set them on the tail. <laughs> it's kind of a dinky little thing, isn't it? <laughs> I, I don't know. I can see kids having fun with that, but no. Oh, there you go. Oh, he jumped right off the review space. Okay. So yes, let me uh, zoom out just a little further for you. Oops, you're going to miss that review space there. So if we do, <laughs> that's really it, isn't it? Maybe it's just because I'm reviewing it at a weird place. I'm sure, I'm sure if you put this somewhere else, it would probably do a little better for you, but that's, I gotta be honest, that's kind of dinky. I mean, it's a fun gimmick, but it is kind of dinky. And the other drawback is you can't pose these legs. They have to be permanently, oh, there, oh, gosh darn it, every time. Um, they have to be permanently stuck in this fixed position so that you can push him back and make him leap forward. <sighs> oh, there he goes again. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I can see this being a fun gimmick for kids. Um, I don't have a big issue with it. Um, I'll try him out on a much more flush and, uh, hardened surface so that way maybe it'll give me a little better result. Oh, feet, that reminds me. So here on the bottom of the feet you can see the Jurassic World Fax app scan code. I'll give you a nice good look at that if my camera will cooperate. There you go. So if you ever want to scan that into your phone but you don't want to buy this dinosaur or you can't, feel free to use mine. And then on the bottom of the other foot you have got the Jurassic Park logo which has been moved from the side of the leg to the bottom of the foot which is one of the changes that Mattel made. Doesn't really bother me. If we take a look at the underbelly while I'm here, this is a beautiful area of sculptural detail there. I'm sorry, I'm kind of getting out of my light, but wow, that is, that is very pretty. I do like that. Going down the body, as you can see, the details are maintained throughout the entire thing. As far as the paint job goes, yes, this is the Tiger Stripe Velociraptor from The Lost World, and it is done to a T here. I think it is very well executed. My only nitpick is that the paint does not go all the way down to the tip of the tail. It kind of tapers out in a natural fashion, but um, I don't know, there's just something about that that never feels right to me. Um, it, it just feels like they're just being lazy. Um, and granted, Mattel did not have to go this hard for this toy line by any stretch of the imagination, but they did. So I'm, I feel bad even nitpicking these things but I still feel it needs to be said. Um, and really that's all there is to the general appearance and the gimmick of this dinosaur toy. Um, overall, I like it. I like the look of it. We're gonna do a uh, quick size, um, size measurement for you and then we're gonna do some comparisons, so stay tuned. All right, just how big is this Velociraptor? Well, it is pretty much the same size as their attack pack figures, kind of in that size range. But from the uh, tip of the snout all the way to the back of the tail, you're looking at right around eight inches long. 
and from the base all the way to the highest point, which is the tail in his, in his um, squatting case, you're looking at right around four and a half inches off the ground, which is about um, 11 centimeters, and in terms of length, he is about 19 and a half centimeters, about 20 centimeters, actually. Um, and then for size comparison, again, we're going to stay in the same vein that we did when we did the Carnotaurus and bring in some of Kenner's old offerings. So here is the Legacy Collection Velociraptor compared to the Kenner original Velociraptor. And as you can see, the Kenner Raptor is a little bit bigger than the, um, oops, bump my camera yet again, than the Legacy Collection Velociraptor. Um, it's, um, it stands a little taller and it is a little bit longer and aesthetically speaking, these two are not married at all. They do not look like they belong in the same world. They do not look play compatible um, and I would not recommend having these two in a pack. Next up, we're going to go ahead and bring in Kenner's other Velociraptor from the original toy line, the Screamer. And mine still works after all these years. These two feel much more aesthetically married than the last one did, but really only because of the coloration. Um, I know he's not standing all that well, but that's just because of the uneven surface of my review space. Overall, I think this Raptor is much better proportioned though. Okay, we're just going to stand him like this for the time being. Oh, he won't even do that. There you go. Okay, so this Raptor is much better proportioned than the Legacy Collection. And I know he's having trouble standing, but he does stand on hard, flat surfaces, even with those small feet. And I'm just saying, they did it back then, why can't they do it now? But yes, these two look much better together. And next up, we're going to bring in the other Lost World Velociraptor, the Snapjaw. Unfortunately, mine is broken. Um, these two, he is absolutely huge compared to the Legacy Raptor. So if you were going to have these two in a pack, this would probably have to be an adult, a legacy collection, probably a juvenile of some sort. But yeah, these ones are play compatible. I can certainly see these, these guys being in a pack. Um, so they are similar sculpturally speaking. They are similar in the color area. And so yeah, these two definitely look like they belong to the same world. And I think that's really cool that this, the fact that this legacy collection, which is paying tribute to the same raptor that this is modeled after, actually look like they belong together. So that's a nice, nice detail. All right, everyone, that is going to do it for our look at the Jurassic Park, Leg or excuse me, Jurassic World Legacy Collection Velociraptor. Overall, I think this is one of the best raptor sculptures that we've gotten from any of the toy lines, past or present. And, you know, I mean, even with those absolutely enormous feet, I think there is something very, very cool about this particular model. Although the gimmick seems to kind of fall flat, um, and again, I'm going to have to test it on a better surface. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. I don't know how I could be, but maybe I am. Um, even though that kind of falls flat, I think this is a great piece to have if you are a fan of the original uh, trilogy of Jurassic Park films. And um, if you want another raptor to build out your Jurassic World pack with, I think this is definitely one that you should look into. It is a Target exclusive, that's the other thing. So if you want this raptor, you gotta go to a Target or live near a Target or have someone pick it up from a Target. Either way, the only way you're getting it is from Target. So all things considered, I think I will recommend this model. Um, but as far as who did it better, Kenner or Mattel, I think this one is going to have to go to Kenner, um, simply because of the engineering um, and the, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much for that. I mean, sculpturally speaking, I think Mattel outdid Kenner here, but the fact that Kenner was able to engineer a raptor that stood fine with small feet and still had a fun gimmick that you could pose and yada, yada, yada. Um, I think they deserve praise for that. Um, that isn't to say this is bad. I just think Kenner did a better job with engineering their Raptors back in the day. As always, I would love to know what you guys think of this model. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm an idiot? Which dinosaur model are you most looking forward to from the Legacy line? Let me know all of your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. As always, I hope you enjoyed our review today. If you did, don't be afraid to let us know by hitting that like button. And also, don't forget to subscribe on your way out so that you don't miss any more of our reviews. We got a lot of more Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom reviews coming your way, so stay tuned. Thank you guys again for tuning in, and that's going to do it for us. Killer Shrew Fan, out.